So now we'll move on to big data platform. Now we have looked into the technologies and the issues with respect to conventional system and do we have any solution? And Mr. Hadoop says he has a solution to our big problem. Who's that Hadoop? Yes, the wonderful, beautiful yellow elephant is our Hadoop. So the issues in legacy systems can be resolved using big data platform. And Hadoop is an architecture which is used to overcome the limitations of the legacy system particularly focusing on storage, processing, and scalability. And why Hadoop? And you have an interesting story behind Hadoop and this yellow elephant. And uh, I think you can Google it and find it out because it's very interesting where uh, uh, it, it takes more amount of time. So just leave it as of now and we move on to the next thing. And we have the recap of, again, we understand the technologies. So earlier we had a look on terminologies. Now we'll have a look on technologies that is being needed for this big data. To understand the technologies that are very, very important before getting into big data, to understand the strength of the architecture. Distributed computing. And when we think of distributed computing, without distributed computing uh, thing, the current scenario, whatever we do, it is only with the distributed architecture. All the databases are connected using a distributed architecture. So distributed is computing is particularly, it is a software-based approach, which is used for sharing the data or sharing the software resources across geographical location. So generally when we talk about distributed computing, we'll be talking about two applications and two domains. One is banking, another one it is railway. So distributed computing is one very important thing we have to understand. It is a software based technology which is being used for sharing resources across geographical boundaries with this particular architecture. Again, you have so many things sitting in it. So we also been heard about distributed databases. The next one, it is parallel processing. So parallel processing is again an architecture which is used for per performing multiple tasks at the same span of time. So doing a process parallelly or executing a process parallelly, the same process parallelly, in multiple spans, we call it as parallel processing. And parallel processing, we call it as an architecture, which is again dependent on a hardware-based architecture. It is a hardware-based architecture. Now, when we look on another important terminology or a technology is cluster computing. So cluster computing, it is again a mechanism which is similar to distributed computing where related homogeneous systems are connected together and formed as clusters to overcome the issue of scalability, to overcome the issue of scalability. For example, when we have some uh, gen system somewhere as servers and we have some more servers at a different location, and when we execute large pool of data, then these servers, which are similar in nature, can be piled together and we can generate clusters where computing of storage and processing can take place is cluster computing. And what is grid computing? Grid computing, it is again an architecture which is used or which assembles heterogeneous resources in order to pool for processing the jobs. So, and again, we talk about cloud computing and cloud computing, we are more familiar about it. Cloud computing, it is again a distributed based architecture, but which provides everything as service. The biggest benefit or the biggest strength of cloud computing, it is, it is being shared as services where all the above four technologies, you need an investment cost for cloud computing, it overcomes the greatest issue of minimizing your computational costs required for doing a business processing. And it overcomes the issues of scalability through its elastic search. 
and it overcomes the issue of single point time failure and it is 24 bar 7 work. All these technologies it help us to perform in such a way. So all these are the existing thing which has been used to manage the large pool of data storage and processing environment in form of service. Now again, the current scenario, the data size is getting generated, evolving at a very faster exponential rate day by day. So couldn't we, we couldn't invest, do an investment on hardware resources or couldn't accommodate the large streaming data, the volume of data, the petabyte of data that is being generated into this existing architectures because of two things, your computational complexity is one major issue. And the second major issue it is your storage efficiency and your processing efficiency. And where this kind of issue has been come up with very large companies which deals with data as their source uh, such as Google and Facebook where data is an input and data is a few well where billions of data and billions of searches has been provided or done by users which creates huge volumes of metadata which in turn has been provided with a lot of services. So they, these organizations are being with, dealt with a lot of issues and which paved way of coming out with a new technology called as big data technology and how we look into. And before we looking into, I, we do use certain words, uh, see, it's an anomaly we use. I do use something called as an architecture. We do use something called as a framework. We do use something called as a component. And we do have to know the difference between this. So when we say it is a framework, framework is collection of components assembled together. And every component is capable of performing its own task and it may be related to a component. Inside a framework, it is an assembly of component and each component will be performing a different activity. And all these components inside your frameworks will be related with each other. And when we go in for something called as an architecture, an architecture is a detailed view of the components inside a framework, how it has been built, how it has been working. It gives us a very detailed architecture, what has been built in that we call it to be an architecture. So in, and when we say something as a platform, platform is a bed where your resources sit in for doing an execution. It is otherwise we call as infrastructure. Big data is going to be in platform. It's, it's going to give us an infrastructure which overcomes issues of your legacy systems in terms of storage, processing and scalability. And the companies which we use this big data architecture or this Hadoop are Google and Facebook and all these leading giant uh, companies which deals with data, so large volumes of data and huge volumes of data, they have come across with the issues of storage and processing and where it requires an alternate mechanism to improve your performance and improve the computational, uh, reduce the computational complexity and provide a better efficiency where big data platform has come as, as a uh, in, uh, as a wonderful uh, technology for processing huge volume of data. And what, what, does, uh, what does it is Hadoop? And when we talk about Hadoop, right, there are two people who contributed uh, to it is actually Hadoop was initially being developed uh, for a uh, search engine losing a text-based search engine was being developed for uh, uh, searching the data in a distributed fashion. And Yahoo was in connection with this using based project and they have come out with a distributed based architecture for processing this large volume of data. At the meantime, Google also released in white paper, which given us a software based parallel processing architecture, a parallel processing model to deal with large volume of data. And these two components, the distributed architecture and the MapReduce component has been blended together and a new model called as Hadoop has been come out. This is how your Hadoop has been born. And Hadoop is an, it, 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 is, an, uh, it is a toy of the person who has um, uh, doc cutting who has actually come out with this wonderful idea of distribution. So he has named it as Hadoop and all these Hadoop based technologies are 
available an Apache. An Apache is a foundation where all the sources are available as open source. So all big data related technologies are under this Apache store where anybody can do a configuration. So Apache is an open source which help us to explore, which help us to use the software without any investment or any cost. All big data related technologies are available under Apache Foundation. And which are the companies using Hadoop? There are n number of more, uh, la large number of companies they go along with Hadoop. So this is a very old slide. Now there is a slight migration from Hadoop to another uh, processing architecture. So we'll be discussing that also. So the companies which use Hadoop are Amazon, eBay, Morgan Stanley, IBM, Rackspace, Yahoo, Facebook. And, and the Hadoop engine was first being tested by Yahoo, by Yahoo, by running cluster computing. It is based on a cluster computing architecture to overcome uh, the issue of scalability, storage and processing. And now we'll move on to what is a Hadoop. So I said that Apache Hadoop is a framework. It's a framework. Now we are clear with what is a framework. It is a distributed processing architecture using a simple programming model that is called a SmartReduce by Google. So it's a framework for processing large data set across clusters of commodity computers using a simple programming model. So what is the main advantage of Hadoop it is Whenever we, our the data size increases, for to meet out the storage and processing requirements, we do an investment. And whenever we do an investment, there is a cost component in it. So any investment has been done, your ROI or return of investment is very, very important. And all the organization could not do a lot of investment for infrastructure. So they come out with an architecture of assembling commodity computers, assembling the existing architecture in a horizontal scaling instead of piling up newer resources as a vertical stack. So the group of resources which are available, which we call it as a commodity hardware, is assembled together. Existing computers are assembled together. When I have a desktop, when I have a laptop and another desktop, then I can form them as a cluster and we can execute large volumes of data without going for an investment or getting a new server. This is what Hadoop helps us to do. So what is the concept? It is moving computation is more efficient than moving large data. This is the idea behind MapReduce. This is the idea behind Hadoop. So we look into what is it. So what, what, what it is, is moving computation is more efficient than moving data is in parallel processing architecture such as your HPC servers. There is a master node and there is slave nodes and the data is your the data is being transferred from the master node to all processing units and the data is being new and the data gets processed and again the data has been returned and the stored in memory so whenever we move data from one location to other location it involves a computational cost in such a way that fetching the data storing the data moving the data from one one storage to other storage then again writing the data processing it again returning back and when we do it it involves a computational cost so whenever we write the data first we have to take a data from secondary device then to my master node from there it has to move to my old processing unit again it has to do a write operation do a read operation again come back so it requires more read and write now the question is not more read and write since our volume of data is very large, very large, enormous, exponential. So moving the entire data and splitting into all these processing units is very complex. You hear with that? And this is where the idea is, let the data remain standstill and the processing model, let it get into the data and it gets processed. This is what is the idea Hadoop is based. So moving computation is more efficient rather than moving data 
in hadoop based architecture the data remains the same the processing of, of is programming model the map reduce is being put into the data making my data stable so the programming model it gets processed so that it reduces the computational complexity and allows us to process more large volume of data and since we use your commodity existing hardware and when we talk about hadoop greater than tb 1 tb or greater than 10 tb when your size is very large this limitation is been resolved so what limitation has been resolved in hadoop the legacy system suffers from two issues one it is storage and other one it is computational complexity these two things are removed in hadoop how using your commodity assembling clusters of commodity hardware using a distributed based architecture and a programming model called as map reduce and these are the two important demands of hadoop very interesting to see our yellow elephant and our black black elephant kicking a ball very nice right so the two important components of hadoop it is hdfs hadoop distributed file system and which is for storage and map reduce the programming model which is for processing you clear now two issues storage and processing is been resolved with whose component hdfs hadoop distributed file system a distributed computing model for what for storage map reduce is for it's a programming model what it does it does parallel processing so resolving our issue of processing and it resolves your scaling issue how because you can assemble more commodity hardware together into it right it is so nice and fine to look into this and when we look into the hadoop architecture it is cluster when you say cluster it is collection of nodes and the nodes will be arranged in so many van all our data centers is collection of clusters so a data center or a server you have a server and inside is a cluster you have n number of servers and each server so it has n number of nodes you have so many units of cpu processing and gpu processing units so it is collection of nodes and each rack and each rack is collection of nodes and this is how a hadoop cluster and when we look into hadoop cluster architecture let us be clear that we understand the basic operating system architecture what we have so the basic operating system architecture is based on a master slave architecture there is a master node which controls all other nodes and those nodes are called as the slave nodes this is what is the system we have in our os you have a master architecture which controls all the other processing units you need somebody to do it so hadoop cluster architecture is again based on our existing architecture your master slave architecture master is a node which orders or which give processing jobs allocates everything to all the other remaining nodes called as your slave nodes this is how your hadoop cluster looks like and what are the services that has been provided by hadoop so hadoop has so many components we uh, this is has been text given in form of text we just understand this with the help of a uh, what to say this uh, particular uh, diagram right so what is hdfs before getting to it we'll understand what is hdfs hadoop distributed file system what does it does it is fault tolerant because it will avoid single point failure when i store my data at only one location then that location is getting affected due to hardware failure or software issue or network failure you could not retrieve the data but in hdfs the data is been replicated at many points so that it avoids the issue of single point failure and it is reliable since you are able to fetch your data when and then retrieve it is called as reliable and it is scalable for large number of systems and it can store multiple copies of data on different nodes and here the data has been split into blocks and stored on multiple machines this will normally happen i could not push my 1 tb data into one machine the data is being blocked into chunks in so many blocks of sizes so 128 mb and it is being pushed into the system and hadoop cluster is based on your a uh, master slave architecture it has name node which is my master node and it has n number of data nodes which is my slave nodes to form your hadoop cluster 
and here files are broken into larger blocks and here the default replication factor is 3. Why replication? To avoid single point failure. Right? Now, when we look on to two demands, Hadoop it has two things. One is distributed data processing, another one it is what? Distributed data storage. Storage is taken care by HDFS. Processing has been taken care by MapReduce. Then what is inside HDFS? I have two components. One is my main node. Another one it is what? It is my secondary main node. And my name node, it has so many other data nodes. Fine? Yes. What is the role of my name node? It is my master. I a master node will allocate the jobs. This data is been allocated to this data node. Data block two is allocated to other data node. This is the role of your name node. And, and data node, it holds all the data in it. And what is the secondary name node? Right. When say my master node, it gets failed. My ATM bank server, it gets failed. It has been crashed. So when the bank says that your entire transaction is lost because of your server is being failed, will we do accept it? No. So you have a mirror image. So whatever it has been happening in a server, the same secondary copy has to be maintained. This is what has been done in all financial or any kind of banking or any kind of transaction we do with databases. So secondary name node, it is an alliance of name node, which has all the replica, all the copies of your name node. So in absence of a name node, a secondary name node comes into action and ensures that your data processing is not affected. It is similar to an alternate. There is one person who looks after it is absent. The other person who knows everything will take care of it and ensure your functionalities is being completed. You are clear with that? So name node is a master, secondary name node is an ally, and name node has so many data nodes and data node is a place where my data is stored. So what is it? We are pushing computing into this data nodes. Who pushes that? MapReduce is going to push it there. So what is MapReduce? Is it a hardware? No, it is a software. It is a programming model. And this MapReduce, it has a job tracker because this MapReduce is going to split one single job to be done into multiple small, small chunks. We call it as threads in Java or in the parallel processing computing. So when I have a job, so how do we do a job? We split the job into so many things and see to that whether we can do it parallelly. Do we do it or not? So it is not all the jobs are sequential in nature, right? So when I want to take a class, right, before coming to the class, right, I want to take an attendance before doing something, I want to do something. So you can assign somebody to do certain tasks parallelly, assemble it and just give it back. So the same thing is going to happen again in the operating system. We have job processing unit. We have schedulers which assign jobs to the processors. Here, MapReduce has job tracker. Job tracker assigns the processing code because when I want to do one action, that is being split into n actions, n1, n2, n3. And which action n1 has to be performed on which data or the same n1 has to be performed on so many data because again my data is split. That has been taken care by job tracker and task tracker ensures that whether this job is being completed and it informs job tracker. Clear with that? Now, this is what is it. Now when I have a name node and I have a data node, I'm a master, I'm an administrator, I give jobs to multiple peoples. And these people will ensure that they complete the job. How do we both communicate? Name node, I assign a job to all my subordinates. And my subordinate has to communicate to me that the job has been completed or not. Only then I can allot the same job to somebody else to ensure that the job is completed at any point of time. Is it or not? Yes, the same thing happens here in name node and data node. So whenever a name node and data node as job has been assigned, the name node and data node, they communicate among themselves using hardware messages called as acknowledgement signal. So whenever data node gets anything, it says to name node that, see, I am alive. I'm here, I'm doing my job. So the name node will ensure that data node is working based on the hardware messages it is getting. So if the name node, it doesn't receive the hardware messages, your acknowledgement messages from data node, name node comes to a conclusion that something error has happened in that particular data node and allows the same job to some other data node. This is what has been happening in the HDFS operation principle. 
Name node, again, it has two important components. It is edit log and FSI image. So what it is an edit log? So when a HDFS starts, so somebody, you need a booting up like processing. So edit log is one which records everything that happens during your HDFS cycle. So edit log, it maintains, it knows there is a file is available, which data node it has been set in, what it has been happening, everything has been done in edit log. And you have an FSI image file which updates with edit log information. Every time any changes happens in your name node, that it has been updated in an FSI image. And this, it has been again transferred to your secondary name node also. Right? And what does a data node it does? So data node, it does the right operations, it does. So data node is the same data as assembled in multiple factors. Right? So name node maintains a metadata saying that the same data available in how many places. So initially the process is pushed to one location. If the data node, it doesn't respond, name node, it does not depend on that particular data node. When I assign a work, the same work, I have three persons to be done. I know three expertise. So I will initially I will be assigning that work to one person. If the person do not respond, so I need not stop it. So what the name node, what I will do with, I allot the, the work to the second person and ensure that the job has been completed. The same thing, name node maintains a metadata about which data node, what data is stored and how many location is stored, we call that as replication factor. So same data is being assembled in multiple places. So this ensures what? No single point, right? Failure. And what is the secondary name node? It is a replica of your date name node, right? And this is your application architecture. So it will be collection of racks and each rock has block. So initially, the data is being pushed into the first block. The second replica will be available in the same rack in some other block. And third replica will be available in the another rack of the same block. And this is your HDFS architecture principle. Right? Overall, whatever we have discussed, hard weed balancing, replication, all those has been put into a common thing. And all these data has been written to HDFS, Hadoop Distributed File System. Hadoop Distributed File System, it has a database with it, which you call it as HBase. Where does it get stored? You need a data storage container. So HBase. What is HBase? Is? It's a NoSQL database, which can store your unstructured, unstructured data. And the more important thing, something about Hadoop is, I said it is a framework. What's a framework? Collection of components. How do you can set up it as an ecosystem? It is like an operating system. We can assemble multiple components together to get our jobs accomplished. So when I want to do my MapReduce using some programming models, then we can have an ecosystem. We can make other languages such as Pig, Hive or something Spark, put into it and ask it to do it. When I want to look into, say, uh, data stores, I need some other databases, then you can just put that databases into it. So we can assemble, manage multiple operations into it and set up an ecosystem. Ecosystem is assembly of different components to then. So when you want to distribute the uh, 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 environment, so you have a zookeeper, which resolves your naming conflicts. When you want to take data from and streaming data, you have strong. When you want to do an iterative processing, you will need Spark. So you initially Hadoop is a bet. You can assemble as you like into it, as you like personalize whatever you want. That can be done with Hadoop. And we have to talk about Yon. So whatever we have discussed is with respect to your Hadoop architecture 1.0. So we initially Hadoop has been released within version 1.0. What is the architecture key? And on Hadoop 1.0, what it is it, every responsibility lies with the name node. Name node has put into a lot of complexities. It has to take care of data node. It has to take care of secondary name node. It has to resolve the conflicts. It has to do a lot of things. So to overcome that issues, Hadoop 2.0 was been released. And Hadoop 2.0, it has and a new component called as YARN. YARN, it is if another resource negotiator, which is similar to an operating system to Hadoop, it is access and resource manager, 
right? So what does it does is it, it this separates the processing e uh, engine and management of your map produce. So yarn it has it takes all most of the responsibility from name node. It monitors, manage workloads and manage everything. And name node is set free to look after only data node. It is not being given with any other workload. So it is always we do work with Hadoop 2.0 version, not with Hadoop 1.0. Version. And YARN uh, Hadoop 2.0 provides a better ecosystem and limitations. YARN is a real life connect, right? And you can connect Spark for iterative processing, Storm for stream processing, and Hadoop for batch processing. Hadoop is a batch processing environment. That's why we have our master slave architecture. Fine. And when we try to configure Hadoop, we never install Hadoop. Normally, all big data platforms, we do an installation using Linux or we do installation using VMware. So we will be discussing that in the forthcoming slides on the next session. So here in Hadoop, right? So we'll be, while installation, we will be looking about or configuring all the components, whatever we have discussed, such as name node, the secondary name node, HDFS, right? All the components, all the components we will be discussing, yarn and all those things, right? And this is your YARN infrastructure. So YARN is your resource manager. If this is scheduling. A node manager, it takes care of its only responsibility. It assigns all the things and it takes care of every infrastructure like an operating system. And now we have to talk about, we have talked about only one entity. What is it? HDFS, Hadoop Distributed File System. For what? Storage. We need what it is. I want my data to be processed. How my data is going to get processed? My data stands static. My processing the information as a software model is going to push on this data. Why? Data size is very large. I couldn't push my entire data. So we go in for what? MapReduce. Who has come out with this MapReduce model? Google has come out with this MapReduce model. So to overcome the issues of storing huge amount of data in single server, it has been come out with this specific model MapReduce. So what is MapReduce is processing, speeding up your execution of a specific process. It's not doing multiple processes. One process, how do I speed up? So individual work versus par parallel work. That we call it as what? MapReduce. And MapReduce, it has five phases. It has a map phase, it has a partition phase, it has a shuffle phase, it has a short phase, and it has a reduce phase. So for this, we can understand our election. Election counting, poll counting, how does it happen? Every election booth is being counted. When accounting has been happened, it is being, and I think it's not missing over here. So every booth, is being counted separately, right? And again, when they take out the boot, they split the data into various bots, right? And they do a separate count. So every boot, so there will be more than one boot uh, allotted to one particular bot, right? Again, bots will be two particular zone. So when an election is happening, they try to do count the votes based on the bots. You have to declare your results. Bots has been again assembled into districts and areas and so on. So every booth they do it and inside they try to partition and arrange it area wise and again they do and then once your counting is completed in all the particular uh, uh, jurisdiction where election takes place then it will be shuffled then it will be sorted and then finally the results will be declared as this district this particular candidate has taken this much thing. So what type of shuffling takes place in electioning process? So candidate wise you have to do a count. Board wise, you have to maintain account. Area wise, you have to maintain account for every booth that has been taking place. This we call it as map phase. And on map phase, I take a booth. And in partition phase, we partition the count candidate wise, area wise, party wise, right? And all the things has been done in partition phase. Once entire booth counting has been completed, then we collect all the data, shuffle it, and declare the result of the candidate and for a particular constitution. This we call it as the reduce phase. So you have two phases, map phase and reduce phase. So this is your analogy of your map reduce execution. You have a map phase, you have a partition phase, you have a shuffle phase, 
we have a short phase and reduced phase. This is what this map reduce model it does. So who has to decide this map reduce task? Is the user have to decide your map reduce task? Not the system. And for every processes, we can have this multiple parallel execution. So it reduces what your processing complexity also. Why? Because we move this logic into the data, not data to the processor. And these are all things related to Hadoop. And again, when we talk about Hadoop, there are um, recent developments that is moving from Hadoop to Spark. Hadoop has certain limitations. What is the limitation of Hadoop? It is in Hadoop, every time my data, when I fetch it, I have to go and store into my Hadoop distributor file system. Every time I have to go and report to my HO, uh, my, uh, my authorities. Every time we have to go and report to the authorities, right? So every time just to go and report it or write it into my Hadoop distributor file system. See, this causes again a very complexity. Every time when you process your data, you move your data to some better location to read and to rewrite, it improves or it increases the things, right? So that it is an issue in this Hadoop. So it, it, it requires more time for transferring the data to the distributed storage environment because this Hadoop parallel processing architectures, they does not have your memory inline capacity. So Spark has come as an architecture. People have moved from Hadoop to Spark and Spark is, has a collection of components which can do everything assembled into it. Spark has a machine learning library. Spark has a database connectivity. Spark has so many features embedded in it. And Spark, it, avoid, it has the map reduce tra transformation takes place within it. And one more advantage of Spark it is, it has in-memory computation. Whatever computation task is performed, immediately I need not go and write to my storage device. You can store it inside your cache. So which automatically improves your performance which in turn increases your processing time. So Spark is 1.5 times faster than your Hadoop processing environment. And Hadoop Spark again, it supports all these components into it. All these components into it, it can be supported. And Spark, it lies on Hadoop, right? And all these things, it has to be installed in a virtual, where in virtual environment. So that is very important. When you're going for a Linux-based environment, it is not necessary. So whenever we want to do a configuration, then we have to go along with your VM, right? Not, uh, not with your virtual environment. When we do it in Linux, we need not have it because in VM, what do we have is we'll have two operating systems sitting on and you need a middle tire to manage these two operating systems. So which requires more storage more memory size. So it is always better to go in for your Linux based environment to do configuration of any big data tools. And uh, I think we have finally come to the end of the session. Uh, so the session might be a little bit uh, very complex or it may be very fast. You may do feel that because the topic is uh, very widened where it uh, involves integration of so many other technologies and so many other components into it. And I think uh, it, it, the, it, uh, the basic idea, which is very important to understand your big data framework is being uh, um, uh, thrown out. And uh, finally, uh, all of our queries has been answered now, right? Why do we move to big data? What is the role of big data as a platform? Why big data is more uh, important, platforms are more important for processing this large volume of data and how does big data work as a tool, as a technology, and as well as a platform. We have, we ever got answers, size of my data, all those things, storage issues, processing issues, scalability issues, all these things has been resolved with this big data. That's why we call it as big data platform as a holistic approach, which covers everything. Is it? It provides, it acts as a tool, it acts as a technology, and acts as a platform and in this session we have discussed with the very basic terminologies and basic technologies which is very very essential to understand 
So all the terminologies, data mining, data warehousing, data lakes, and distributed computing, cluster computing, a better understanding is being required because all these were our commodity architectures or our existing architectures are being lied on. Once we move on to a new architecture, then we should be very capable or very important to understand where is your storage lacking or what is your complexity where you couldn't fit down this big data into the existing environment. What makes a necessity to move in? Then I and I I have let it be your question. Why data size more than one terabyte is called as big data? The reason is all the computing environments, all your hardware storage devices, what we have as of now, the size of your hardware, it is one terabyte. Since my hardware size is one terabyte, I could not take up all my one terabyte data and make my data sit on my existing hardware on my commodity hardware network because you need some space for your OS and other driver settings. So this is why data size, which is more than one terabyte is called as big data. Be clear with the definition by one terabyte because of the commodity hardware uh, limitation. It is only one TB, my maximum size. So I could not store data beyond one TB. My big data itself is beyond one TB, right? So this is what we have seen because we are always, now we are dealing with terabytes. Companies are processing petabytes of information, more information, and uh, people are processing exabytes of information. E-commerce giants, they process exabytes of information. Now, so that made big data to be more than one terabyte of data. And we had a detailed view of the Hadoop architecture, and we will look into the Hadoop architecture. There are two important demos. One is HDFS, another one is your MapReduce. It's a distributed file system architecture and it has a master slave relationship. It has a name node, it has a slave node, it has a data node, it has a secondary node, a name node, it instructs the data node, and data node has replica of same data available in multiple replicas. And secondary name node is an allies of your name node. Right, and you have uh, one uh, your name node, it takes care of everything. So, you have a job tracker and your task tracker to look along all those things. In Hadoop 2.0, we have Yarn, which is a resource manager which takes care of all the complexities what has been happened in the name node. So, Hadoop it is good, it has a storage called as Hadoop uh, HBase, which is a NoSQL database. And the limitation of Hadoop it is the read write access, it causes a lot of complexities because it doesn't have your in memory computation. So people have moved to an other technology called a Spark. And Hadoop, you can set up our own ecosystem also. Spark, the advantage it is has, it, it is again has all the facilities in one line, right? And it stores data as dark. I, I it didn't explore much, it stores data as dark, and it has an in-memory computation facility. And MapReduce is a programming model devised by Google. So there we have four five ways. You have a map phase, you have a partition phase, you have a shuffle phase, you have a sort phase, and finally you have a reduce phase. So this is how the jobs get executed in the big data Hadoop platform. And we can configure that. Which laptop? You can configure in the laptop which has 512 MB RAM capacity when you go in for your Linux version. So I think we are at the end of the session and uh, I would like to acknowledge the trademarks and product names that has been used in the slide and I cite them. And we are at the finally end of the session. So before uh, thanking you, uh, we'll uh, end of the session and we me I'll meet you in the next session tomorrow on big data tools. We'll be looking, we'll have a detailed view on big data tools in the next session. Until then, bye. Thank you.